The Great Chronicle of Buddhas. The author. He author, Baddanta Visitasara Bhivanisa, Mean Gun Tipioka Darasayada, as he is popularly known, was born in the village of Thaibuwa on November 11, 1911. At the age of eight he was sent to Sayadayu Savita of Minjiang Monastery, Mianjian, to start learning the rudiments of Buddhism. When he was ten he was ordained as a mayora by the same Sayada. Ten years later he went to Damanata Monastery, a secluded place of holy personages, in Mingun, Saogang Township, for further learning. In 1930, he received higher ordination. His sponsors were Dada Makare, a prominent and learned nun of Mean Gun, who was the author of the Sukhava Deaake, and Sir Youth Win, a wealthy philanthropist of Yangon. Since then Dada Makare had become his spiritual mother and Sir Youth Win his fatherly supporter for his religious life. In 1937, when the first Damanata Sayada, who was his preceptor at his ordination, passed away. He had to take charge of the monastery. Sayada had passed a series of religious examinations invariably with flying colors since the age of 13. To mention a few, in his fourth year as a bhikkhu. He passed the Dhamakariya examination held by the Pariyadi Sasanahita Association of Mandalay, which was a formidable examination in which only a few candidates dare to sit for. The examination is on the three great commentaries which candidates normally try to finish one by one in three years. But the author passed all three commentaries in one year and acquired the rare and coveted title of Pariyadi Sasanahita Amakari Yavao Nisoke. However, the first time he really made his name for himself as a man of vast learning was when he passed with distinctions the Tipioka Dara examination which was held for the first time and was also reputed to be the longest and most difficult one. As the name of the examination suggests, the candidate has to recite all three piokas that he had learned by heart. In addition, he has to pass the written papers on all the canonical texts and commentaries. It took him four years to sit the whole examination that earned him, in 1953. The unique title of Tipioka Dara to my Agarika, which means bearer of the three piokas and keeper of the Dhamma treasure. Sayada's ability to recite 16,000 pages of Buddhist canonical texts has been recorded in the Guinness Book of Records 1985. As regards his work for the Sasana, suffice it to say that even before that great achievement of being Tipioka Dara to my Agarika, when the Sixth Buddhist Council was well underway, Sayada was assigned the task of editing the canonical texts to be approved by the Council as its version. Besides, when the Council was convened, Sayada acted as the Visijika, that is, respondent, answering questions on all three portions of the canon. The Pakika, questioner, was the late Mahasi Sayada. In answering the questions, the author took the combined role of Thera Upeli and Thera. Ananda who answered the questions on the Vinaya and the Dhamma respectively at the first council presided over by Thera Mehakasapa. After the council, the author devoted himself to literary pursuits. At the request of Yu Nu, the then Prime Minister of Myanmar, he assiduously compiled Mehabuj Dhavanisa being the Myanmar exposition on the lives of the Buddhas as related mainly in the budged Havanisapeli text of the Kataka Nikaya. This compilation, resulting in six volumes and eight books, commenced in 1956 and ended in 1969. The work, being the author's magnum opus and a colossal contribution to Myanmar Buddhist literature, has been received with enthusiastic acclaim by members of the Sangha and the laity alike. In the year 1980, an historic event in the history of the Sangha in Myanmar took place. 
It was the emergence of the state Sangha Iyaka committee comprising representatives of all sects of the Buddhist Sangha in Myanmar. The author was unanimously elected permanent general secretary of the committee, which, as the T. In addition to his responsibilities as general secretary of the state Sangha Iyaka committee, the author is busily devoted to the service of the Sasana in three main areas, namely providing support and facilities for the emergence of more tipioka bearers for the perpetuation of the Sasana, providing support and facilities for the dissemination of the Buddha's teaching at home and abroad, and providing adequate medical facilities for members of the Sangha from all over Myanmar. For the first task, the author founded the Tipi Okanikaia organization whose chief aim is to nurture young bhikkhus so that they may one day become bearers of the three piokas and keepers of the Dhamma treasure like himself. There are a number of promising learners under his care at Mamiak Hill near Mean Gun. Soon after the formation of the state Sangamehana Iyaka committee, it firmly resolved to establish two separate universities of Pariyati Sasana in Yangon and Mandalay, where the good law of the perfectly enlightened one would be taught in a new system of education to produce theras who will spread the teaching in Myanmar and elsewhere, in pursuance of the second objective. The author's untiring efforts have resulted in magnificent university buildings which have newly sprung up both at Yangon and Mandalay, where courses leading to the degrees of Amakariya and Mayhad Amakariya have been in full swing since 1986. As to the third important project undertaken by the author which was for the welfare of the Sangha, the Javidadenesa Sana Specialist Hospital for Bikhas has been founded in Mandalay. It is a 100-bed specialist hospital with all the facilities and equipments for a modern health center and was formally opened under the auspices of the author himself on August 18, 1990. In recognition of his great learning and of his invaluable services to the Sasana, as mentioned above, the government conferred upon him the title of Agamehepeaa Aida in 1979 and the title of Abhidajamehero Ahiguru in 1984. Hale and hardy at the age of 79, the indefatigable Sayada kept on striving continuously, day in and day out, towards furtherance of his three main tasks. Thus setting an exemplary model for emulation to all who desire to promote the welfare of beings by means of the Buddha Dhamma. The Author's Introduction Namo Bhajtaiya Side Dam Namo Bhajtaiya Side Dam Kata Soti Yamehavera, Abhine Aruna Rutama, Kamhi Kelte Adhera, Pathetabodhimadame Buddha who is endowed with the four kinds of right exertion, one who is the highest among men and higher than devas and brahmas, and who is thus chief of these three categories of beings. How should we comprehend your resolve to gain Buddhahood of great glory, that pervades the whole universe extending from the bottom realm of intense suffering to the top realm of brahmas? Since when has your mind become inclined to achieve the prime laurel of perfect self-enlightenment? which surpasses the enlightenment of a private Buddha and the enlightenment of a disciple? This inquiring note of acclamation was sounded in the sky over the city of Kapilavathu on the first waning moon of Kasan, in the year 104 Meha era. The background story, in brief, of this question is narrated below. The Buddha, the omniscient one and lord of the three worlds, observed the first rain retreat in the deer park of Isipatana, Varyose, in the year 103 Meha era. During this retreat, he converted the five ascetics and the group of 54 friends headed by Yeza, son of a wealthy man, leading them to Arahantship. When the retreat was over, he asked them to disseminate the Dhamma, which is excellent in all three aspects, the beginning, the middle and the end, and no two of them going in the same direction. He himself went alone towards the forest of Aruvile to convert the three ascetic Kasapa brothers and their followers, numbering 1,000. 
On the way to Aruvali, on reaching Kapasaka Grove, the Buddha met with 30 Badavagi brothers who were searching for an absconding woman. He established them in the lower paths and fruitions and made them Ihai Bhikkhas. Then he proceeded alone to Aruvali where he liberated the eldest brother, Aruvali Kasapa and his 500 followers from heretical views. He did the same for Nade Kasapa and his 300 followers and Gaya Kasapa and his 200 followers. Finally, he preached to all the 1000 ascetics, the Odatapari Yeya Sutta on the stone slab at Gaya Sasa and thereby established them in the fruition of Arahantship. And, together with the 1000 newly accomplished Arahants, the Buddha set out on a journey to the city of Rajagaha. The day the Buddha arrived in Rajagaha, he helped King Bimbisara and the Brahmin householders, 110,000 in all. With his teaching to reach the state of Sotapatifala and another 10,000 Brahmin householders established in the three refuges. The following day, the Buddha accepted the Vovana monastery which was generously donated by King Bimbisara in support of his ministry. It was the first monastery he had ever accepted and the occasion of his acceptance of the monastery was marked by a great earthquake. From that time onwards, he had taught all those worthy of 1. Right exertion, Samapadhana. The four such exertions are The endeavor to prevent the arising of evil which has not yet arisen The endeavor to put away evil that has arisen the endeavor to bring about the arising of good which has not yet arisen. And the endeavor to further develop the good that has arisen. Oh, conversion, who came to him, including those who would eventually become chief disciples, great disciples and ordinary disciples. He did so as though he were dispensing among them the medicine for deathlessness. While the Buddha was thus busily engaging himself, his father, King Sujdhadana sent nine ministers, one after another, each with one thousand men, on a mission to invite him to return to Kapilavathu. Instead, they became Arayants and neither conveyed the king's message to the Buddha nor sent back any information to the king. So the Buddha's playmate, the minister Kaudaea, was sent as the tenth envoy, also with one thousand men. Kaudaea and his men became Arayants, too and spent their time enjoying the bliss of their spiritual attainment. When the cold season was over and spring arrived, Kaudaiya made a humble request to the Buddha, in 64 verses, persuading him to return to the home of his kinsmen. The Buddha then journeyed to the city of Kapilavathu on the first day after the full moon of Tabong traveling slowly, covering only one Yojana a day, and arrived at Kapilavathu on the first day after the full moon of Kasan in the year 104 Mehe. Era. On the same day the second princes welcomed the Buddha and his host of Bhikkhas in a great ceremony, they took them to Nagadharama monastery as arranged beforehand. On arrival at the monastery, the Buddha sat in the seat specially prepared for him and remained quietly surrounded by 20,000 Arayans. The Sikhians who took too great a pride in their high birth, thought to themselves, this Prince Siddhatha is younger than us. He is only a young brother, or a young nephew, or a young grandson of ours. And, puffed up with conceit, they urged their younger kinsmen, you bow in homage to the Buddha. We shall, however, stay behind you. The Buddha knew the inner minds of the Sokhyan princes were dwelling with pride of their birth and thought to himself. These proud kinsfolk of mine do not realize that they have grown old without accomplishing anything beneficial for themselves. They know nothing about the nature of a Buddha. They know nothing about the power of a Buddha. What if I should display a Buddha's might by performing the twin miracle of water and fire? I will make a jeweled walk in the sky, a platform as broad as the 10,000 universe. And, I will walk to and fro on it and pour forth a shower of sermons to suit the temperaments of all those who come to me. No sooner had he resolved thus, the Brahmas and Devas acclaimed their joyous approval. Then the Buddha entered upon the fourth jena making white as his object of concentration. On arising from that jena, he made a firm resolve that light should spread all over the 10,000 universe. Immediately after that resolution, 
All the universe was flooded with light to the great delight of Devas, humans and Brahmas. While they were rejoicing, the Buddha rose up into the sky by developing the supernormal power through exercise of the fourth jhana. Then he proceeded to perform the Amakapa Oeharya, which consisted of the appearance of flames of fire and streams of water emitted alternatively from the top and bottom of the body. From the front and the back, from the eyes, from the ears, from the nose, from the shoulders, from the hands, from the sides, from the feet, from the fingers, toes and from between one finger and another as well as from between one toe and another, from each hair of the body, and from every pore of the body. The emitted fire sparks and water sprays fell amidst the crowds of human and celestial beings as though the Buddha was letting the dust fell from his feet onto their heads. This exhibition of the twin miracle with the emission of fire and water alternately from the body of the Buddha created a marvelous spectacle of great splendor which inspired all the Sokyan princes with awe and reverence, moving them to utter words of resounding praise. After the performance of the twin miracle, the Buddha created a jeweled walk of great brilliance which extended from east to west reaching even beyond 10,000 universe. He then walked up and down the jeweled walk and delivered several discourses to devas and humans suiting their mental dispositions. Thought to himself, I shall now go to the Buddha and make a request for a complete narration of the life histories of the Bodhisattvas and the perfections they had fulfilled. Accordingly, he lost no time to gather the five hundred Arayants, who were all his co residents and said to them, Come, we will go. We will pay a visit to the Master and ask him about the past stories of the Buddhas. Having urged them to accompany him, they traveled through space by means of supernormal power, at so fast a speed which surpassed that of the wind and the storm. In a moment, the Venerable Sariputta, with the company of Bhikkhus, arrived before the Buddha and paid homage to him. Then he uttered the verse. Kedasoti imehevera, abhinayero nur atama, etc. Mentioned at the beginning, thereby asking the Buddha to narrate elaborately how he had received the definite prophecy from the former Buddhas and how he had fulfilled the ten perfections, which extend to thirty in all, for the Bodhisattvas. Then the Buddha, who was still on the walkway, responded with two verses. Petapemojiyananani, sake salavanodanani, etc. Meaning, listen to the budged Havanisa discourse which could give you joy and happiness, remove the thorns of sorrow and bestow upon you the three kinds of bliss, namely, human existence, divine existence and nibbana. Having thus listened, try to follow and practice the path, as will be explained in this discourse, that could dispel conceit, eradicate sorrow, liberate you from sanyasara and put an end to all suffering. Thus the Buddha, out of compassion, urged all devas, humans and brahmas reciting the verse numbering four Bhavaras two. The commentary on the budged Havanisa The budged Havanisa text is included in the Kataka Nikaya of the Sutanta Pioka which was recited at the first, second and third councils by Rayants. The commentary on it, entitled Madhur at Thavilesane, consisting of 26 Bhavaras, was authored by the Venerable Buddhadatta a resident of the Port Monastery of Kavira Pau Ona of the Koa country in South India. The Great Budged Havanisa Story During the Reign of King Bagadaw A.D. 1819 to 37, the fourth founder of the city of Ratanapra, the first Inglakan Sayada, recipient of the title of Odak Havanisa by Dajamehada Marajedi Rajaguru, wrote the Budged Havanisa Story in prose. He combined the text and its commentary interspersed with certain Peli verses and their word-for-word -word translations for the aforesaid benefits of joy, and of sorrow, etc. By young men and women of good families. He did not translate the whole text word-for-word. -word. That budged Havanisa in Myanmar prose was published in 1297 M. E. Bizem Bumyitz Pioka Press, Yangon, in three volumes with the title, The Great Budged Havanisa Story. Sudhamavate Budged Havanisa Not long after the Great Budged Havanisa story was been published, the Sudhamavate Budged Havanisa story appeared in one volume of poetical prose, written by editor Yuachin Sine. 
The state budged Hassasana Council's version of the Mayhe budged Havanisa after the founding of the new independent country of the Union of Myanmar, the people, both the Sangha and the laity, were busy assiduously making preparations and arrangements, shouldering their respective responsibilities for holding the Sixth Buddhist Council. The Prime Minister Yu Nu, seeing their dedicated activities, was inspired by the profound thought of bringing out a new version of the budged Havanisa text and its commentary. A version that should include everything that is connected with the Buddha. Accordingly, he requested me, in his house, on the occasion of Anakai's ceremony and inauguration of his shrine room, to write such a saga of the Buddhas in commemoration of the great event of the Buddhist council. I said to the Prime Minister then, I have been assigned to participate as a Tipio Kadara in the Sixth Buddhist Council which is to be held soon, and I still have to work hard to become qualified for the title. With this excuse, I refused to comply with his request. Indeed, at that time, I had just passed the written examination in the Vinaya Pioka and was about to sit for another one on the Abhidhamma Pioka. Succession of compilers undaunted by my refusal of his request, the Prime Minister persisted in his earnest effort to produce the proposed book by approaching other scholars. And the compilation started first under the supervision of Mdhavasayagi Yusa Ng. Some months later, when only a portion had been done, the work was interrupted until Mehapawaibala, Payahamag Yasayagi Ukaipe took over as supervisor. In the same way, the compilation again passed on to Agame Pea Aita Sayagi Yulin, M.A. After one and a half years, he could finish compiling only the first volume of the series. Then Yulin passed away to our great regret, leaving only the fame of his learning. The assignment given to me it was on the eleventh day of the waxing moon in the month of Nada, 1316. That Sayagi Yulin passed away. Four days later, the sponsor of my ordination and spiritual father, the wealthy Sir Yuthwin, the Dojere Sadama, chairman of the state budget Hasasana Council and patron of the Sixth Buddhist Council, came to see me at the request of the Prime Minister and asked me not to refuse should the Prime Minister make a request for writing a budget Havanisa. On the full moon day of Piatho, 1316, the Prime Minister himself came to see me at my temporary residence at the Sangha Meditation Center and made a formal request as follows. Please supervise the compilation of a treatise on the lives of the Buddhas. In so doing, please include everything about the Buddha, not leaving out even minor details. If one volume is not enough, make it two. If two is not enough make it four, eight and so on. It is important that the work should be exhaustive. The writing should be intelligible and interesting to all, young and old, even to non-Buddhists, who wish to know about the lives of the Buddhas. Should the Venerable Sayada undertake the task of writing the Mahabhajd Havanisa in Myanmar, it will be welcomed by all, both the Sangha and the laity alike. The request had been made repeatedly, the first time in 1313 ME, the second time in 1315, and now in 1316 by my spiritual father and finally by the Prime Minister himself. I therefore felt that I should no longer refuse to comply with the request. Accordingly I gave my consent firmly saying, Very well, De Iyakegi, when the proceedings of the Council are over, I will take charge of the compilation and supervise the work to the best of my ability without sparing my energy. After the Prime Minister left, I reminded myself of following dictum. In hi k retani hi vad, yam na k retani vad. A karantani besamenani, peri yananti pe a ede. One should say what one would do, one say not what one does not. He who says but does not do is subject to blame by the wise. Request made by the state budget Hasasana Council not long after I had promised the Prime Minister, the state budget Hasasana Council also made its own request. In reply to it, I stipulated the following three terms for carrying out the work. The work would be done voluntarily without acceptance of any honorarium. I would have nothing to do with office administrative work. And I would take charge of the literary matters only in which I feel competent.
I added that if these three conditions were agreeable to the state budget Hassasana Council, it would mean that I had accepted the assignment. Some days later, three officials from the state budget Hassasana Council, namely, Chief Editor Yuba Mi and Editors Sayachin and Sai Yubadan, approached me with the favorable reply that the state budget Hassasana Council had agreed to all the points raised by me. Then, in accepting the compilation work, I said to Sayachin and Sai Yubadan, Subject to failure is a work without a leader. So is a work with too many leaders. I accept the work as its supervisor so that the compilation of the budged Havanese may not fail. You carry on with the assignment as has been planned since the time of Sayagi Yulin. I shall attend to the editing work when the proceedings of the council come to an end. The Prime Minister's request in writing as though to drive in a nail where it is already firm or to strap on an iron belt where it is already tight, the Prime Minister's formal request in writing came. The letter was dated the 14th waxing moon of Nada, 2499 Sasana era or 1317 Myanmar era. Sayagi Yulin's great learning when the 6th Buddhist Council and the ceremonies commemorating the 2500th year of Buddhism in 1318 Myanmar era M.E. came to an end, in compliance with the Prime Minister's request and in fulfillment of my promise, I started editing the MSS so far prepared on the Mahabudj Havanisa. I found them running over 700 pages, written while the Sayagi was still alive full of noteworthy facts with profound meaning, covering a wide field but not easy to be grasped by ordinary people. In preparing these MSS it looked as if the Sayagi was making a final display of his great genius of learning. When Sayagi Yulin first planned the compilation of the Mehebaj Havanisa, he had in mind to write it only briefly and did so accordingly. But the Prime Minister Yunu earnestly urged him saying, let it be as elaborate as possible. Sayagi. Write all there is to know about the Buddha. There cannot be anything that is too insignificant to be left out. Please write to the best of your ability for the benefit of the coming generations. Sayagi then put aside all that had been written before briefly and worked afresh keeping his mind steadfastly on the subject of the budged Havanisa all the time. When he began working, on arrival at his office, he would put both his arms on the desk and start dictating to his stenographer, giving him no rest, sometimes making a clicking sound with his tongue. At other times, clenching the fists, closing the eyes and gnashing the teeth to concentrate his energy. All this was known from the information given by Sayachin. New plan of the compilation of the Meherbaj Havanisa such a very ambitious literary work which was full of noteworthy doctrinal points with their deep meanings, like a treasure house of knowledge presented by the Sayagi as if he had hoisted the flag of learning of his lifetime, should not be published as originally envisaged by him. I feared that readers would find it rather confusing and difficult to read and understand. Therefore the writing of the Meherbaj Havanisa had to be planned anew as follows. The main subject of the budged Havanisa should be treated separately. The chapter on rare appearance of a Buddha should be rewritten and confirmed by other learned Sayadas. A new chapter on miscellaneous matters concerning duties which should be comprehended and performed by every aspirant of Buddhahood should be added. Explanatory notes and interpretations should be given fully in a separate chapter entitled A New Depane, to serve as a supplement to the first part of the first volume and difficult usages should be made easy by replacing them with simple ones in Myanmar. When the manuscripts of the Meherbaj Havanisa finally went to the press of the state budged Hasasana Council, Sayagi Sayanine, Meherpawar Bala, professor of Peli, acted as chief proofreader. Exhortation to readers This version of the Meherbaj Havanisa contains the same material with the same meaning as that preserved in the original Baj Havanisa text its commentary, etc. The only difference between the original works and this lies in the medium employed, the former in Peli and the latter in Myanmar. Since a budged Havanisa can truly confer upon its worthy readers such benefits as, joy and happiness, and of sorrow, and the three attainments of human existence, divine existence and nibbana.
As has been pronounced by the Buddha, this introduction is concluded with an exhortation in verse so that each reader might enjoy his or her share of welfare. Patabto may have budged have any so budged hat that apako. Budged have a dana mat the ietaninisimethisadavo. Oh, you worthy men of gentle mind, seeking your own interest and that of others. This book of the Meha Budged Havanisa, a version of the State Budged Hasasana Council, which has made its appearance in commemoration of the convening of the Sixth Buddhist Council, resembles a plot of land on which virtuous Buddhists may sow seeds of the Dhamma. It vividly describes, for the benefits of those who are virtuous devotees of Buddhism, how the Buddha, the friend of the three classes of beings, had performed unique meritorious deeds beginning from his existence as Sumedha. Therefore, you all who aspire after the fourfold knowledge of the path, the true enlightenment, should study it carefully with an eye of wisdom, fully confident that you will gain the fruits of joy and happiness, and of sorrow and the three attainments of human existence, divine existence and Nibbana. You visit a Sarabhivanisa Tipioka Dharadmai Bayaa Agarika the seventh waxing moon of Wazo. 1399, Mayan Marira. Chapter 1 Salutation and Intention 1. Namo Tassel Begavato Arahato Samesam Budged Hasa. 2. If most respectful adoration, I pay obeisance to the Buddha who, like his predecessors, has made a very rare appearance. Who, like them, has no peers among, Devas, human and Brahmas in the three worlds. Who, like them, forms a refuge for all these beings who bow in homage, and who is like them in all aspects of glory, virtues and attributes except in eight individual features three, such as lifespan, height, lineage, duration of strenuous exertion, rays emitted from body, conveyance used on renouncing the world, body tree and size of days as seat. With most respectful adoration, I pay obeisance to the Dhamma, which, through his omniscience and out of profound compassion for all beings, has been well taught for by that Buddha, and which has been held in high esteem by himself. With most respectful adoration, I pay obeisance to the Sangha, the order of noble ones, who have become true sons of the Master by their proper and upright practice five of the Dhamma. Having paid obeisance to the Buddha, the Dhamma and the Sangha, I shall now write in a language neither too brief nor too elaborate, neither too simple nor too difficult, and relying mainly on the canonical texts of the Budged Havanisa 6 and its commentary and also taking relevant materials from other texts and commentaries, the Meha Budged Havanisa, the Great Chronicle of the Buddhas, a book on the lives of 25 enlightened ones from out of innumerable past Buddhas whose number is far greater than that of the grains of sand of the Ganges 7. Beginning with the account of the exalted Daipakara, from whom the future Gautama, as the hermit Sumedha, received the definite prophecy eight that he would. 1. The original word in Pali is Pawiyoi, which literally means promise or vow. 2. This Pali sentence is the formula of great honor paid to the Buddha which may be translated. Honor to him the Blessed One, the Worthy One, the Perfectly Self-Enlightened One. A Buddhist literary work usually begins with it to show the author's exclamation of obeisance. 3. These are called Aohavemteni, which Malala Sekara translates eight particulars in which the Buddha differ from each other. His rendering of these eight are, length of life in the epoch in which each is born, the height of his body, his social rank the length of his austerities, the aura of his body, the conveyance in which he makes his renunciation, the tree under which he attains enlightenment, and the size of the seed under the body tree. Dictionary of Peli proper names under Buddha. 4. This is the first attribute of the Dhamma. 5. These are the first and second of the attributes of the Sangha. 6. The fourteenth book of the Kataka Nikaya of the Sutta Pioka. 7. CP. Few are the saints of the Ganges, innumerable are the conquerors, who have entered Nirvana. This is from U.P. E. Mongtin's translation of the popular Pelly Getha beginning with the word. Sambud. 
The relevant peli composition in two lines are a pack of a gange, a nantanibatajine. 8. Receiving of the definite prophecy is an important feature in the spiritual. W. Become a perfectly self enlightened one. May those virtuous people, who are desirous of seeking merit and knowledge, who, with abiding faith, have established a firm foundation of refuge in the Buddha Nine, the Dhamma and the Sangha, and who are properly and uprightly cultivating the threefold practice of morality, concentration and insight, may they easily attain the path, fruition and nibbana. Evolution of a Bodhisattva. We shall see more about it when we come to the story of Sumedha. 9. Here the author adds an adjectival clause reading whose supremacy in the three worlds is like the ruby-studded pinnacle of a palace. The three worlds here are the three realms of sensuality, materiality and immateriality. The first corresponds to the realm of five senses, comprising the four woeful states, the human world and the six celestial worlds. The material and immaterial worlds belong to the Brahmas, 